Shift handovers are essential to good nursing communication and impact directly on the delivery of care and ward productivity. As part of implementing the Releasing Time to Care module of the Productive Ward series, the Shift Handover module was introduced in the Midlands Regional Hospital Tullamore. This module focuses on developing practical and structured methods of improving ward handover. To support the implementation process, the module team developed this training video which aims to educate nursing and healthcare assistant staff on how to conduct a clear, comprehensive, person-centred handover within a timely manner using a standardised, structured format. The video shows how this approach to shift handover improves patient outcomes through enhancing patient safety, improving the delivery of care, reducing adverse incidents, reducing the time spent in handover, improving the quality of handover information. Incorporated in this approach is the ISBAR communication tool, which is used in tandem with the nursing process and a chosen model of nursing to identify the information that's required for exchange at handover, thus ensuring that handover is patient focused. All references to patients either verbal or written are fictitious and were developed to support the training process within this video. First, let's look at what happens within the existing handover. Okay then, Ward 1, Bed 1, we have Mary White. Mary is a 76 year old lady, she's married, she's a Roman Catholic, and her husband Sean is her. Oh, your grand, Virginia, your grand. You're right, you can page. Yeah, okay. You alright? Yeah. We're just on the first one anyway. So, Ward 1, Bed 1, Mary White, she's 76. She's married, she's a Roman Catholic. Her husband Sean is her next of kin, and she also has a son there, James. His number's there. Told you about the home Sorry, of two. She lives with her husband, Sharon. She lives with her husband. He's 82 or 83. Oh He's God. an elderly gentleman. He's had a stroke um, right. in the past. Son is nearby, though. Okay. Um, so, sorry, Sinead. David Black, can he drink or eat, or what's the story with his? We're waiting on salt yeah, to see him, Barry, so we we're going to give him taking okay. fluids and a soft diet. Thank you. Very but nice. if he's not alert enough, just judge it yourself. If Are you're you? unsure, just come back to us. Anyway, this lady, she came into a &E with her daughter-in-law and she's an exacerbation of COPD. She's a past medical history of ischemic heart disease, atrial fibrillation, type 2 diabetic, peripheral neuropathy, PVD. She also has bilateral leg ulcers. Medical There's one second. Sinead, it's Brady. His daughter on the phone. She wants to know how she got tonight. She wasn't too bad. She slept for short periods overnight. Okay. Yeah, she had a comfortable night. Okay. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. She also had her appendix out when she was 28. She lives in a bungalow uh, with her husband <coughs> and her children. Her son has grown up, as I said, no known drug allergies, and she's on multiple medications. This lady has a water loss score of 23. She has home oxygen and nebulizers, as I said. Um, she doesn't leave the house very much either. It's Barry there. You can grab that. Okay. Thanks, Regina, thanks. Anyway, this lady, her mobility is very poor, so Sorry, she's that. Uh, well, she's, yeah, she's 76. She's 76, um, Sharon. She's very poor mobility. She's. Um, thanks. Yeah. Hello, Medical 2. She's diabetic diet, but she's very poor compliance. Back in ten minutes. Thank you. She's very poor mobility, as, as I was saying. She's a high falls risk, mobile with a Zimmer frame and supervision. Home oxygen, I told you about. She's still smoking as well, though. So there's a bit of a problem there. She's diabetic uh, and she's very poor compliance. She tends to eat sweet things as well. She is continent, does get short breath on exertion, mobile with the Zimmer, as I told you. Pressure areas are high risk and she's nursed upright in the bed with plenty of pillows. Anyway, back to overnight then. She wasn't too bad. Her saturations are low on the oxygen, so we need Sorry, to get... who does she live with? Her husband. Her husband. Her husband, Sean, and he's, uh, he's 85 or 86. He's had a stroke in the past. Anyway, her uh, temperature and everything was grand there overnight. Her EWS is high, but it hasn't really changed two. since yesterday. Yeah, just one sec now. Anyone see the medical essay, John? No, I haven't seen anything no. since six. Six, okay. No, no, they're not here. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Sorry. You're okay, you're grand. Um, she needs to be seen by the respiratory nurse and the diabetic nurse. And um, anyway, she was grand. She wasn't too bad now overnight. 
Bed two is David Black. David is an 82-year-old gentleman and he is from Tullamore. He's a married gentleman and he has a son, Tony, who lives up in Dublin. He's with us two weeks now and he had a left CVA with a dense right-sided weakness. He has past medical history of Parkinson's disease, hypertension, dementia. He had poor mobility prior to this, but now he's fully immobile. Ulster Flights and Sorry, ischemic Sinead, heart. Sorry, getting back to Mary White. Is she still on an IV antibiotic? Oh, she is, yeah, sure. She's on IV uh, TAS and IV Hydro, and it's day three today. Day three. Okay. Cannula due to be removed tomorrow. Okay. Hello? No, I'm sorry now. It's protected meal time, okay? So it's not visiting time, all right? Anyway, now, where was I? What did I tell you? I told you the past medical history bit. Anyway, yeah, he was living with his wife before this. And I told you about the grown-up son. He's an allergy to penicillin. He's on Cardora, Aricept, Aspirin, Lipistat and Abixa. And at the minute, we're having to crush his medications just because of his swallow. Mm. His water low score is 16. Uh, the plan now is for this gentleman to go to a nursing home. And uh, we need to chat with the public health nurse about that, whether he's on discussion at the meeting yeah, today. He's is he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And just to chat with the son and the, the wife yeah. and see what nursing home they, they want him to go to. Okay. So anyway, what else is for him? You know about the meeting, so you'll be down at that. Is that all right? Yeah. That's your gang, guys. Yeah. See That's you later great. on. See you tonight. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Oh, Section A, Regina. You're with me. And her husband, Sean, is her. Oh, you're grand, Regina, you're grand. You're right, you can page. Yeah, okay. You all right? Yeah. We're just on the first one anyway. Sorry, sorry, Sinead. David Black, can he drink or eat, or what's the story with his? We're waiting on Saul to see him, Barry, so we'll peripheral neuropathy, PVG. She also has bilateral leg ulcers. And our medical too. Just one second. Sinead, it's Brady's daughter on the phone. She wants to know how she got the medical. She has home oxygen and nebulizers, as I said. Um, she doesn't leave the house very much either. Is Barry there? You can grab that. Okay. Thanks, Regina, thanks. Hello? No, I'm sorry now, it's protected meal time, okay, so it's not visiting time, all right? This best practice handover process has been developed by the Releasing Time to Care Productive Ward Module team in the Midlands Regional Hospital, Tullamore. It incorporates a number of Releasing Time to Care principles, as well as using recognised communication tools such as ISBAR. Let's have a look at how the best practice handover process works. Hi guys, are you ready? Yes, we're ready. Morning. Morning. Alice, will you do the calls if there's any calls sure. or interruptions? No Thanks a million. You ready? Yeah. Okay, in Ward 1, Bed 1, we have Mary White. She's a 76-year-old lady and she was admitted on the 17th of the 9th under Dr. Maguire. She's been admitted with an exacerbation of COPD. She's a past medical history of ischemic heart disease, AFib and type 2 diabetes, peripheral vascular disease and peripheral neuropathy and bilateral leg ulcers. She's been treated with IV antibiotics, steroids and nebulizers and today is day 3. She lives with her husband, who's an 85-year-old gentleman, and he has had a stroke in the past. They also have two sons who live nearby and call in daily. She still smokes. In relation to her ADLs, she requires assistance of two. She is mobile with the Zimmer frame, but she does require supervision, and she can become very short of breath on exertion. And she's also a high falls risk. Her water low is 15. Overnight, she slept for short periods. And for today, then, she needs to have a respiratory nurse review and a diabetic nurse review. Her leg dressings need to be done. She's for a repeat chest x-ray and we need to chase up the report on her sputum sample. We also need to monitor her fluid intake as she doesn't take enough fluids and adhere to a strict diabetic diet as she has a bit of a sweet tooth. Her VIP score is zero and her cannula is due for renewal tomorrow. In, w in bed two then we have David Black and David's an 82 year old gentleman and he's been with us for the last two weeks. He is a left sided CVA with a right sided weakness and he is now fully immobile. He has a history of Parkinson's disease and ulcerative colitis. We have no EDD for him because the plan is for long-term care and I think he is for a discussion today at the placement forum. He was living with his wife prior to this admission and they have one son who lives in Dublin. In relation to his ADLs, he is now requiring full care. He's a hoist transfer out into his OT chair, which he can tolerate for short periods. His water low score is 18 
He has a pressure relief in cushion and a pressure relief in mattress. His pressure areas are red and blanching. He has been seen by the salt and he's for a modified diet which he's not tolerating at present. His urinary catheter is also draining very concentrated urine so we need to up his fluid intake. His speech is very poor after his stroke. It appears like he's confused but he's not. You just need to give him a bit of time and at the moment we're crushing his medications. So for today, for D David, he needs a further salt review. We also need to chat to the public health nurse in relation to the placement form and speak with his wife and his son in relation to where they would like him to go. So that's your gang, guys. Uh, just to bring to your attention that there are two patients with similar names, so just to be mindful of that. Uh, have a good day. That's See you tonight. Nice. Bye. 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 Now, girls, Sharon, I'll give you Ward 1 today. Okay. And just to make sure that if we get Mary White's leg ulcer addressed today. Yeah, I'll do that. And Alice, just in relation to Mr. Black, are you going to the forum today? I am, yeah. Okay, so we'll have the information about his long-term care plan then. Okay. 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 Right, girls. Let's start. Healthcare assistants play a vital role in the delivery of patient care and are an integral part of the ward team. As part of the best practice handover process, the healthcare assistant is now formally involved in handover. Previous practice involved an informal approach to communicating with the healthcare assistant. Now the nurse in charge formally communicates relevant patient information, such as personal hygiene, mobility and dietary needs, to the healthcare assistant using ISBAR. Let's look at how this works in practice. Morning, Mary. How are you? Morning, Barry. I'm grand. Thanks. You're the healthcare assistant with me today, mm. Barry. So I'll just give you a quick rundown on the patient. We have Mary White. She's 76. She came in with an exacerbation of her COPD. She has a very low oxygen saturation, so she needs her oxygen on all the time. She needs help with toileting and hygiene needs. Uh, her mobility is a problem, so she needs close supervision if she's moving anywhere. She has a diabetic diet and needs strict supervision with that as well. She needs an intake and output chart because she's not drinking very much, so we need to monitor what she's putting in. The next patient is David Black. He's 82. He came in with a CVA. He has a dense right-sided weakness. He needs a full nursing care. He needs a hoist to get out of bed. And the OT has supplied a chair for him, but he can only tolerate that for short periods in the daytime. He's difficulty in swallowing. Uh, speech and language have seen him and they've modified his diet, but he's not um, tolerating that very well. He has a catheter in and uh, a strain in concentrated urine, so he needs to drink plenty as well any time you're passing. Do you need weights on any of the patients? Oh, we need a weight on the new lady, Bridie Green. Thanks very much. Okay. Talk to you later on. Thanks. Thank you. A new initiative called Meet and Greet has also been introduced as part of the new process. This facilitates the opportunity for staff coming on duty to be introduced to their patients by a member of staff from the previous shift. This short clip demonstrates how this works. Good morning, Mary. Just want to introduce you to your day staff today. You have Regina and Barry here. They're going to be taking care of you for the day. And I'll see you tonight. Bye. Bye we'll head over here then. To The best practice handover now incorporates a number of key elements to support the exchange of clear, comprehensive, person-centred information within a timely manner using a standardised structured format. Hi guys, are you ready? Yes, yeah, we're ready. Morning. Morning, how are Alice, will you do the calls if there's any calls sure. or interruptions? So thanks a million. Now, girls, Sharon, I'll give you Ward 1 today. Okay. And just to make sure that if we get Mary White's leg ulcer addressed today. Yeah, I'll do that. And Alice, just in relation to Mr. Black, are you going to the forum today? I am, yeah. Okay. So that's your gang, guys. Uh, just to bring to your attention that there are two patients with similar names, so just to be mindful of that. So for today, for D David, he needs a further salt review. We also need to chat to the public health nurse in relation to the placement form.
good shift handovers are essential to good nursing communication and impact directly on the delivery of care and ward productivity. By using a structured, standardised approach and incorporating specific communication tools such as ISBAR, the nursing process and a specific nursing model, it's clear through a comparison of existing and best practice that the impact of this approach can demonstrate improvements in areas such as communication, increased productivity with less time spent on handover, a focused approach to handover, inclusion of relevant staff, use of the patient communication board and patient safety. Where the best practice handover process has been implemented, these improvements have been achieved. Here's what some of the nurses in Tullamore think of the new handover. The old um, system, I found it went on quite long and a lot of interruptions. I uh, found out we were repeating ourselves a lot and just a lot of information was very relevant to the patient. Well, I find it's more structured. There's a, a set person in charge and you know who you're given handover to and um, the information is very relevant to the patient so we're not wasting time. Therefore, we're back out on the ward with more time for direct patient care. Well, in the current system, we, we, we had to make a lot of notes and there was far too much notes really and you don't have time to consult the notes when you're caring for patients. With the new system, all the information is available on the board and it's there at a glance and we know that everybody is working off the same information.